Welcome to Movie Recall. In today's video, we'll be going through the 2021 movie, The Hating Game. It's time to recall. Let's get started. Turn on subtitles and spoilers ahead. The movie begins as 28-year-old Lucy Hutton is seated at her desk at Bexley and Gaiman Publishing. She and Joshua Templeman, who works at the desk next to hers, assist the co-CEOs Helene Pascal and Richard Bexley. According to her, one of the most crucial things about Lucy is her hatred of Joshua Templeman. In the morning, Lucy Hutton constantly thinks about how much she despises Joshua Templeman. The two of them often engaged in childish and unprofessional games. Lucy only performed something at work after turning it into a competition with Josh, whom she viewed as her archenemy. Both assistants hate each other and think the worst. Lucy is thinking about how to beat Joshua at work and how she can handle everything, and she looks at Joshua and thinks that all he wears is blue colors. She counts the days in her head and on which day Joshua has worn light blue, on which day he has worn tea blue, medium blue, and Savoy blue. And with that thought, she is disturbed by the thought that why does she think about him? She should hate him, and she gets back to work. In the next scene, they are both called to a meeting of CEOs and they are about to announce the great news. Both Mr. Bexley and Helene want their executive assistant to fill the role of chief operating officer when they announce the creation of a new post. They look at each other with grim smiles because none of them wants the other one to win. At that moment, she thought of how she could defeat him, and all she could think about was him only, and she wanted him to regret messing up with her, just like his work and behavior messed up her mind. So she starts making plans and starts thinking of how to make certain plans work. After intensifying her rivalry with Josh, Lucy goes back home and calls her mom, and her mother asks her if she isn't going out for the weekend, and tells her to find a man and Lucy says that she is going out with her girlfriends. Her mother asks her why she isn't going out with that guy from the office which she always brags about. Lucy needs clarification and thinks about why she always has Josh on her mind. With that thought, Lucy goes to bed and Lucy then dreams sexually of him. She wakes up in the middle of her sleep and thinking about that hot dream she has about Josh at that moment, she thinks of the awful idea. She thinks of luring Josh sexually so she can get into his mind and also makes him get in trouble for sleeping as she has. The following day, with her awful plan in mind, she dresses up in a short black sleek dress for work to grab his attention. As she walks into the office, Josh sees her and smiles and asks her if she has a date, and she starts lying and telling him that she is dressed so nicely because she has a date. Joshua asks her at what place she is going, and she lies again about the place, and Josh says that coincidentally he is also going to that same place. This makes Lucy more awkward, and then he asks her if someone is from the office, and she says yes, but in reality, there is nobody because she was dressed up to impress Josh. She goes downstairs and asks designer Danny to go out with her because he does not believe her. After seeing her in the black dress, Josh, who secretly likes Lucy, takes more interest in her and her date. As they go in the lift, Josh asks her if she needs a ride. She says she'll walk to the cafe. Still, Josh points at her high heels and tells her if she walks in such shoes, she might get her pretty little feet hurt at this. Lucy gets very angry, but her anger goes away as she sees him from very close. She looks in his eyes and at that moment they both connect. So Joshua can't handle himself and he kisses her in the elevator. As the elevator stops, they both get very awkward. In a silent mood, Josh drops her at the cafe where Danny is waiting for her. Josh asks Lucy to take his umbrella as it is raining outside, but she says no and rushes out of the car. She gets in the cafe and greets Danny, but she is still thinking about the kiss as she excuses herself to go to the restroom. Josh shows up. She shouts at him for ruining her night, and all she can think of is how a man can manipulate her, and also tells her that she is looking pretty in that black dress. Josh tells her that he is not here to ruin her night, but is here to return her bag which she forgot in the car. But that night, Anne insists on taking her to her date. She is surprised that she likes it, but she still goes on her date with Danny and is upset with Josh for ruining her night. She searches Joshua's desk the next day, seeking evidence to use against him, and discovers codes in his day planner that she cannot understand. A difficult-to-find Smurf figurine is delivered to Lucy by the mailman to add to her collection. Joshua criticizes her for worrying too much about what people think of her. Joshua makes fun of her growing up on a strawberry farm, unintentionally making her feel lonely and homesick. The following day, she gets roses and the note, You're always gorgeous. She suspects Danny is the source of the roses. When she goes to work, she feels happy, and Josh asks her if they can forget about the kiss they had the night before, and Lucy agrees to this point. So Josh asks her what game they should play next, and she says why not be a normal college and not fight all the time, and Josh gives her a funny look. And at that moment, her boss walks in and asks about the campaign, and she is telling about her idea for the new promotions. 
Josh steps in and tells her that's a boring idea, and he has always submitted a promotion with a paintball game idea, which has been approved. That moment, Lucy has a flash and she thinks of choking Josh to death, but she comes back to her sense and says, okay, we're gonna play a gun game now. The next day, Josh's idea comes to life and everyone has had a paintball game played at work to foster camaraderie. As they are getting dressed to play the game, Lucy looks pale and Josh checks her and says that she is burning, but she ignores him and goes to play the game. Danny steps in and asks Lucy if they can team up for the game, but Josh stops him there and says that the teams are pre-selected and that Lucy and Josh are a team. While playing the game, Lucy tries to win and Josh tries to save her from getting hit, but she is stubborn, so she goes in front but gets hurt. They both fall to the ground and Josh asks everyone to stop the game. As Lucy gets off her helmet, Josh notices she is burning and before she can say anything, she vomits on Josh. Josh cares for her in the heart but doesn't show, so he brings her back to her house. When she becomes seriously ill, Joshua helps her get home. Once he realizes there is no one else to care for her, he stays to do so. She asks him to leave, but as he's about to calm her down, she vomits again, and Josh calls his brother to check up on Lucy as the whole family of Josh is full of doctors. After checking up on Lucy, Josh's brother asks him to rest and goes to another room to prescribe medicine for Lucy. Lucy overhears Joshua chatting to his brother Patrick, a doctor, about getting married as he invites him over to look at Lucy. Joshua is persuaded by Patrick to attend the wedding and to bring Lucy. After that, Josh puts Lucy to bed and in the morning, he makes her breakfast and cleans her house. Lucy gets very much weird about it and tells him not to use any of the tactics against her at work, which pisses Josh off, and he leaves in an instant. When Lucy comes to the office, she is confronted by Danny. He brings her flowers and takes her to her office, and when Danny leaves, she sees strawberry juices on her table, which she told Joshua Knight when she was ill. Joshua and Lucy get more intimate with one another due to her illness. Lucy understands that she doesn't despise him. Joshua is upset when he kisses her on the cheek and invites her to supper that evening. When she finds that juice on the table and sees the card, she guesses the flower from earlier that week that Josh sent. And she gets very embarrassed about it because she bragged that Danny gave her all the flowers and she wants to thank Josh. So she asks Josh if she can do anything to return the favor, even go to his brother's wedding. He resists her attempts and she pushes him to the storeroom and there she says that she wants to return the favor but the heat gets bad and she asks him to kiss her. He says she is to kiss Danny that night and if she doesn't feel that Joshua is the only one who can kiss her like that, he will wish them well. Danny and Lucy kiss but Lucy feels nothing and they decide to remain just friends. She and Joshua cross paths on the sidewalk when she arrives at the street where he lives. They kiss after she informs him that no one can kiss her as he does. She notices that his bedroom is Robin's egg blue in his flat. He explains that he won't have sex with her since he wants much more time if they only do it once. She calls Joshua after work but hangs up because she can't help herself. She and he decided she should go to his place when he phoned her back. Joshua makes out with her once more but refuses to kiss her. Joshua informs Mr. Bexley that he won't want assistance in unseating Lucy for the position at work. He feels as though he has used Lucy. Joshua is disturbed when he meets Danny for coffee to discuss her interview presentation. The following day when they are scheduled to leave for the wedding, Joshua instructs her to bring her weekend bag to work. Lucy overhears Joshua and Mr. Beckley bickering the next day. She is concerned about what it is, but nobody will say it. Lucy and Joshua flirt and talk about how attracted they are to one another on the way to the wedding. She acknowledges that he was the subject of the erotic dream she experienced and that she had to negotiate that first date with Danny due to lying about having met someone. Joshua and Lucy are having fun at the hotel when Joshua's mother Elaine calls to ask for help with the wedding decorations. As Joshua comes back, Lucy is already dozing off. Joshua admits to Lucy that in the past, women had just sought him for his appearance. After getting to know him, they had moved on to a decent guy. Joshua seemed to be upset at the wedding. Eventually, Lucy finds out that the bride, Mindy, was Joshua's ex-girlfriend. He must have brought her as a rent-a-date, Lucy surmises. Elaine reassures her that this is untrue and that she is unique from everyone who has come before. Joshua stops Lucy from leaving by explaining that he doesn't need moral support for Mindy. Rather, he needs support because his father, Anthony, who broke his heart, needed it. They finally have sex that evening and it's the most incredible she's ever experienced. The following morning, they have sex once more in the shower. At the wedding brunch, Anthony is challenged by Lucy. She stands up for Joshua and extols his wonderful qualities to Anthony. Joshua and Lucy return to the city. They freely acknowledge they are in love. He claims to have always done so. His bedroom was purposefully painted her eye color. 
Lucy gets flattered when she sees that painting, and at that moment, Josh tells her that he loves her and wants to end the fights and get together. But Lucy gets weird about it and says that work will come in between, so Josh calms her down and asks her to relax and not think about anything else but them. So they both agree to start over that night. The next day, Lucy overhears and misinterprets the conversation between Josh and their boss, concluding that Josh has been using their romance to distract her from the promotion. Enraged, she vows to beat Josh for the job. She goes back to Danny and talks about how she believes that Josh is telling the truth and thinks he loves her. Still, the truth is he does love her, and all he can think about is Lucy, only that there is a plan and he was pretending about that conversation with CEO, so after a tough competition, everyone is gathered in the hall. And as Lucy goes there, she thinks that Josh has become the new operation director, but instead, he informs her that he is switching positions and that she will take over as Bexley and Gaiman's new COO. In the end, she is on a call and is arguing about her writers with someone. It turns out that on the phone is Josh, and he is taking her out on a date. They kiss, and the end. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, and click the bell icon to get new movie recaps.